Let's call this meeting to order. It's the regular regular council meeting of August 28th, 2017. The time is 7.30 p.m. Can we begin with roll call? Mayor Pro Tem Bliss? Here. Councilman Clark? Here. Councilman Corbett? Here. Councilman Gettings? Here. Councilwoman Scott? Here. Councilman Soltis? Here. And Mayor Hartwell? Yes, I'm here, thank you. Uh, would you please rise if you're able for an invocation to be led by Councilwoman Scott and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, as the lightning and the thunder crash around us, I, there's people in this country that have a bigger problem. Um, so, Heavenly Father, we pray tonight for the victims of the hurricane and flooding in our state of Texas and surrounding areas. Please be with everyone waiting to be rescued. Keep them safe and bring help to them as soon as possible. Help provide them with their immediate needs of food, clean water, and proper shelter. Be with the rescue workers and keep them safe as they make heroic efforts in dangerous situations to rescue those in trouble. Please touch the hearts of the world to continue to pray for these victims and to donate whatever they can or help in whatever way possible. Father, bless each and every person affected by the storm and surround them with your love, protection, and angels. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? All right, hearing none, there are no presentations or public hearings tonight. Reports on agenda of interest to parties in the audience? Uh, Ms. Moore, we're at the point where we uh, bring okay. issues on the agenda up right now. Is there yes. a specific issue you'd like to discuss now? Uh, yes, the Red Oaks Na uh, Nature Center roof replacement. Oh. I, I was wondering if the, if the county owns that property, why are we replacing the roof? We do have a cost-sharing model with us, but Ben, could you, Mr. Myers, could you explain? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Uh, Gloria, the county does not own that property. The city of Madison Heights owns the property, but the county operates it uh, under a lease agreement with the city, and under that agreement, we share the maintenance costs because the county has the long-term lease, and, and we're the, basically the landlord and the owner. So uh, any capital improvement that's over $5,000 in cost, the county pays the first 5,000 of that, and then we split the remaining balance on a 50-50 basis. So we do own we do own the building. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Moore. Any other reports on the agenda of interest to parties in the audience? All right, we'll go to meeting open to the public. This is our, the uh, time um, to address any issue. If you could please give your name and address, although it's not required, and limit your comments to three minutes or less. Good okay. evening. My, my name's Gloria Moore, still, and I'm <laughs> at 27368 Dartmouth. Uh, Friends of the Madison Heights Area Senior Citizens is having its uh, third Tuesday meeting on September 19th at 7 o'clock. I, I had gotten um, an okay from the man with the key uh, that we're going to have Wil be at Wilkinson Middle School. And we're going to be providing uh, snacks and uh, beverages there. Everyone is, is welcome. And also, I'd like to thank uh, Mary, Mary, Mary Mayor Brian Hartwell for coming by with, with Kathy and uh, and uh, lifting spirits up and putting that photo on Facebook. I'd, I'd like to thank uh, for for the uh, community barbecue and uh, picnic, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, Margie Scott for the uh, for the side dish of the four bean <laughs> salad. And uh, yeah, it was very tasty. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mark Bliss for bringing his family by and then uh, helping clean up everything and, and packing us away. Also, I'd like to thank e Emily. I forgot what her last name is. It starts with an R. She, she helped set up. Aaron came by to say hi. And uh, 
and uh, Ron Butler came by and uh, and lead up on the on on um, horseshoes, and I'd like to thank him too. Thank you for everybody for showing up, and all those that came by to participate in our in our uh, community. Uh, barbecue and picnic I'd like to thank and we're going to try it again next year and we're hopefully we'll have co-host uh, co and make it a better deal thank you thank you the meeting is still open to the public would anyone like to address City Council on any subject <laughs> good evening welcome mr. Capizo uh, good, e good evening um, I was looking at the city's website and I didn't I couldn't find anything on the upcoming council election. Is, did I just miss it? Is, is there nothing out there on, on the city's website? The city clerk can give you, uh, us information right now about the next election. Would you please? Yes, there is information under the elections tab under the clerk's office. It just As of right now, it just has uh, voting locations and the date of the next election. But there's no, we wouldn't put anything about candidates or anything on, on that website. Are you looking for something specific? Is there going to be a debate or anything? Or maybe they had one? Funny you mention that. There's going to be a Meet the Candidates on um, September 13th, and in conjunction with that, we also are going to be um, demonstrating our new election equipment. Thank you. The meeting is still open to the public. Would anyone like to address City Council? All right, no one's asked to be recognized. Thank you. We'll continue. There are no communications tonight, so we'll go to reports. D1, it's a report from the city attorney and the police chief regarding the renewal of the entertainment permit for Augie's Lounge. Mr. Myers? Yes, Your Honor. On November 15, 2002, Big Five Entertainment Incorporated, doing business as Augie's Lounge at 31660 John R., entered into an agreement for entertainment permit requiring an annual view, review by city council. The vice president of Big Five Entertainment has indicated his desire to have the agreement continue on the same terms and conditions during the next year. Uh, this agreement permits uh, karaoke and, with prizes as a permitted activity. The police department and the city attorney's office have reviewed the agreement for entertainment permit and have no objections to the continuation in accordance with its terms. Uh, based upon the good working relationship with this establishment and the review of the police reports, uh, police contacts, and the uh, Liquor Control Commission file, Chief Haynes recommends a two-year extension for the agreement. If council concurs, the appropriate action would be to continue with the agreement for an additional two years, subject to the same terms and conditions, including, but not limited to, the next annual review which shall take place on or about August 1st, 2019. Thank you, Mr. Myers. What's the wish of City Council? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Clark. I make a motion to continue with the agreement for an additional two years subject to the same terms and conditions including but not limited to the next annual review which shall take place on or about August 1st, 2019. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Is there support? Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Support. Thank you. A motion was made by Councilman Clark, seconded by Councilman Corbett, to continue with the entertainment um, permit and agreement with Big Five Entertainment doing business as Augie's Lounge for an additional two years, subject to the same terms and conditions, including, but not limited to, the next annual review of August 1st, 2019. Is there any discussion? All right, we'll vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The motion carries. The next report is item D2 for a similar renewal of the entertainment permit for Red Robin Restaurant. Mr. Myers? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Red Robin at 31805 John R. has made its biannual request to renew the existing entertainment agreement. The police department has checked departmental and LCC commission related records for the past year, and the police chief recommends renewal for a two-year period. Uh, the city attorney's office has contacted the owner and has confirmed that the agreement would continue without changes. Based upon the good working relationship with this establishment and the review of the police reports, city records, police contacts, and the LCC file, staff and I recommend renewal of the entertainment agreement with Madison Heights Robin Incorporated for a period of two years until the next review, which will take place on or about August 1st, 2019. Thank you, Mr. Myers. What's the wish of City Council? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Yes. I move 
before the council to renew the entertainment agreement with the Madison Heights Robin Inc. for a period of two years until the next review, which will take place on or about August 1st, 2019. Thank you. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Support. Thank you. A motion was made by Councilwoman Scott, seconded by Councilman Corbett to approve the renewal of a two-year entertainment agreement with Madison Heights Robin Inc. Um, with the next review period taking place August 1st, 2019. Is there any discussion? All right, we'll vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed say no. The motion carries. All right, moving on. There's nothing under item E, so we'll go to item F, bid awards and purchases. First one is F1 regarding the roof replacement project at the Red Oaks Nature Center. Mr. Myers? Yes, Your Honor. The fiscal year 2018 adopted budget includes $24,500 for the city's share of the Red Oaks Nature Center roof replacement under our lease agreement with Oakland County Parks and Recreation. Oakland County publicly bid a number of roofing projects in their park system on the uh, Michigan Intergovernmental Trade Network and also reached out to several vendors with whom they had previous working relationships. Although 13 companies downloaded the bid packet, only one company submitted a bid, Howell Construction of Howell, Michigan. Due to the single response, Oakland County's architectural engineer reviewed the full scope of work with the vendor post bid and reports that Oakland County has worked with Howell Construction before and has had a successful experience with them. Additionally, uh, the city has also had prior experience with this contractor as Howe Construction is the firm uh, which constructed the addition to the animal control shelter. The scope of work is a complete replacement of the 1995 asphalt shingle roof which has passed its service life, including any necessary repairs to the underlayment, insulation improvements to alleviate an existing ice dam issue, and a partial demolition and reconstruction of the chimney with log, uh, concrete log sheathing. The total amount, including a 5% contingency, is 38891 of which the Madison Heights share would be $16,945.50. The Oakland County Board of Commissioners approved the bid for the roofing project at their regular meeting of August 2nd, and staff and I recommend the City Council approve the Red Oaks Nature Center roof replacement project to the sole bidder through Oakland County, Howe Construction, with a city share of the project not to exceed $16,945.50, and funds are budgeted and available for this project. Thank you. What's the wish of City Council? Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Sir, I move that the uh, Council approve the um, roof replacement project at the Red Oaks Nature Center uh, to the sole bidder through Oakland County, Howell Construction, with the city's share of this project, not to exceed $16,945.50, money of which is budgeted and appropriated for the project. Great, thank you. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Clark. Support. Thanks, a motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilman Clark to approve the roof replacement project for the Red Oaks Nature Center to the sole bidder through the Oakland County process, Howell Construction, with the city share of the project to not exceed $16,945.50. Is there any discussion? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed to say no. The motion carries. We'll continue on in the agenda to F2 regarding the DTE agreement for street lighting improvements on West Gardenia. Mr. Myers. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, this year's adopted budget includes $12,000 in funding that was carried forward to implement street lighting improvements along West Gardenia between John R. and Stevenson Highway. Currently, there are eight span or wire suspension lights that exist in this corridor. The existing light, uh, lights are 100 watt high pressure sodium fixtures, which will be replaced with 65 watt uh, Audubon LEDs. This project will include brand new support arms at each location to mount the new fixture and the removal of four obsolete wood poles and all associated cabling and other equipment. These lights were specifically targeted due to ongoing maintenance issues and DPS staff have noticed intermittent outages with these span lights, uh, even with routine maintenance being performed by DTE. Uh, we would note that it's also getting more difficult to find parts for these fixtures. fixtures. 
Staff and I recommend that the council authorize the city manager to sign the purchase agreement with the Detroit Edison Company for the replacement and upgrade of eight span lights along West Gardenia in an amount not to exceed $11,834.45. The purchase agreement has been reviewed by the city attorney's office and funds are budgeted and available for this project. Thank you. What's the wish of city council? Your Honor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gettings. Yes, sir. I like to make a motion that uh, the city mayor and city council authorize the city manager to sign the attached purchase agreement with the Detroit Edison Company for the replacement and upgrade of eight span lights along West Gardenia in an amount not to exceed $11,834.45. Thank you, sir. Is there support? Your Honor. Mr. Bliss? I second. Thank you. The motion was made by Councilman Gettings, seconded by Mayor Pro Tem Bliss, to authorize the city manager to sign the purchase agreement with the Detroit Edison Company for the replacement and upgrade of eight span lights along West Gardenia in an amount to not exceed $11,834.45. Is there discussion on this item? All, right. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. All right, the motion carries, just like the last. Uh, okay, we'll move on to F3. It's another bit of word and purchase regarding the sewer camera replacement and trailer retrofit. Mr. Myers. The fiscal year 2018 adopted budget includes $65,000 for the replacement of the sewer inspection camera and associated costs to renovate the existing camera trailer, which is our vehicle 466. Additional funds of 75,000 were carried forward from fiscal year 2017, providing a total available amount of $140,000. The sewer camera is lowered into uh, utility structures and used to crawl through and televise runs of sanitary and storm sewers to identify any deficiencies or sources of contamination, such as failing pipe, root infiltration, or illicit discharges of grease or chemicals. Our existing camera was purchased in 2004, and with the exception of an upgrade from VHS to DVD recording, the unit consists of its original 13-year-old components. The camera has suffered multiple breakdowns in its drivetrain, drive resulting in extended downtime and frequent repairs to keep it running. It's no longer reliable for any length of use, and the repair costs have increased. The current trailer that houses the equipment necessary to operate the camera is inadequately equipped by current standards, meaning it lacks a workbench, wash, a wash down system and hand washing station, and other necessary amenities to properly facilitate a sewer inspection program. In addition to the mechanical breakdowns, an operational deficiency exists in the existing camera setup with a complete lack of reporting capability in the control unit. The current industry standard features software which can note the condition of pipe and any issues, specific locations and dates and times, and provides these reports and videos in a format that's easily integrated into our geographic information system uh, mapping system. The existing camera has none of these capabilities as it can only record video onto a writable DVD using a homeowner grade uh, DVD recorder with notes uh, physically written down on paper by the operator. In addition, uh, excuse me, in anticipation of the planned replacement of this equipment, staff began the process of examining several different camera configurations from multiple vendors in the industry. Although many were found to be capable, it was the unanimous consensus that the EnviroSight Rover X system was the best fit for the DPS's needs. This machine and system are compatible with the upcoming departmental purchase of the PipeLogix sewer inspection software, and it offered the most versatility, maneuverability, and durability in terms of analyzing various pipe sizes, and it's currently being used by the city of Troy and has been given rave reviews, and it's priced, priced competitively among all models. The Rover X is available on the MI Deal state bid through Bell Equipment of Lake Orion, which is a longtime vendor for the city. This quote also includes the labor and materials necessary to renovate the existing trailer as part of the installation process and several options for the camera package, which include different types of wheels for varying pipe sizes and conditions, an on-tractor lift system to raise the camera out of the water in high flow situations, and other appurtenances for cable and equipment protection. And importantly, this camera will use the same software or pipe logics that is being used for our current stormwater asset management and wastewater or saw grant work uh, to maintain and update our sewer con uh, condition records. 
Accordingly, staff and I request the council approve the purchase of the Environmental Rover X sewer camera inspection system, the ident options identif as identified, and the build out of the existing trailer from Bell Equipment of Lake Orion in an amount of $105,000 through the MI Deal State Cooperative bid. Uh, and I would note that this, play, uh, this price reflects the trade in value of our old camera system. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you. What's the wish of City Council, Your Honor? Mr. Bliss. I move that we approve the purchase of an EnviroSite Rover X sewer camera inspection system with the options as identified and the build out of the existing trailer from Bell Equipment of Lake Orion in the amount of $105,000 through the MI Deal State Cooperative bid. Thank you, sir. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Support. Thank you. A motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Bliss, seconded yeah, by was, Councilman was Corbett, to approve the purchase of an EnviroSite Rover X sewer camera inspection system with the options as identified and the build out of the existing trailer from Bell Equipment of Lake Orion in the amount of $105,000 through the My Deal State Cooperative bid. Is there any discussion on this item? Your Honor. Please. Uh, well, anytime that we, we have a, a large purchase like this, I'd always like staff to go into the bid process and you know talk about how we got to the price that we got to. But I also know that uh, Mr. Vitale is pretty excited about this technology. So I'd love to hear a little bit about what we're getting, how it's gonna be used, and how big of an upgrade this is gonna be. Just as, you know, kind of a quick overview for those uh, here and watching at home. Thank you. Mr. Vitale, would you like to uh, speak on this issue? Explain your excitement. <laughs> Good evening, Your Honor and Council. Would you mind repeating a couple of those questions? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Councilman Bliss, just so I, what we're actually getting, how we got to the price, and some of the upgrade features that uh, DPS will realize as part of this equipment. Yep. How, how we got to the price, and, and, and what are some of those features that uh, uh, DPS and, and subsequently our residents should be excited about? Certainly. So when we started looking at a uh, sewer camera upgrade, it was last fiscal year, and we put some monies in the budget to be able to purchase this. Uh, once we started doing some fact finding, from some of the vendors, we realized we didn't have enough funding for that, so that's why you saw this two-phased funding approach uh, equaling about $140,000. Uh, once, once that funding was approved by council, we reached out to five or six vendors that sell this type of equipment. We had them come down to DPS, and we actually put our hands on all of these pieces of equipment. So we went through a pretty rigorous process in terms of what do we like, what works well, um, what types of software do they use, and things like that. So. Uh, uh, we vetted this pro uh, process pretty well in terms of uh, looking at what was available out there in the industry. After that, um, in terms of what we're going to get with this upgrade, our current camera, if you could imagine we drop this thing down in the pipe, we can actually see what's going on on the TV screen, but that's all that we can do. And we've had uh, multiple breakdowns and maintenance issues, as Ben mentioned, as part of the part of the report. What we're going to get now is uh, a completely retrofitted trailer. It's basically going to look like a studio inside of this thing, so we can drop this camera down. We can still watch it, but what it's going to have is going to have footages. It's going to be able to track this through GPS, and that information will be imported automatically into our GIS system. So when I get back to the office, I can pull up this program and basically look at that section of pipe on my laptop. So the integration and the technology available now through this process is going to be amazing for us. And I wanted to mention one other thing. It fits hand in hand with what's going out there, what's happening right now with the saw grant out there. All of the information that they're gathering as part of the citywide sewer inspection program will be integrated into this process as well. So it's it's a it's going to be a great deal for us. Very cool, Your Honor. If I could add one one point to, to Mr. Vitali's statement, one one of the advantages that we have with a system like this that's integrated into our GIS is. A, a fully functioning asset management system, which was going to help us in, in prioritizing future pipe repairs, capital planning, and forecasting, uh, because we'll have it at a glance to see which areas of the city, uh, you know, we should be targeting for, for future sewer upgrades and be able to look at that and uh, com comprehensively rather than piece by piece. So it, it will help us with our planning for sure. Great, great, great point, man. Any other discussion on this item? Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. 
I've actually seen the old one at work. And there was a washout across the street under somebody's approach. So they went in there looking to see if they could find a problem why this hole was under the, the approach to the uh, house. Well, you could see he's, the gentleman operating it says it's definitely not coming from there. If you look right there, the whole line is deadheaded, which they mean it's blocked off with cement and brick. And it's, it's just amazing how it, how it works. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. I don't mean, Mr. Vitale, I don't mean to put you on the spot if, if you don't know that I understand. Um, but in terms of investment, have you guys estimated like the return on investment in terms of what, what it saves the city? Your Honor, I, that would be a very tough question to answer, but I will tell you that uh, um, when sewers do back up, and when that happens and you have issues in your sanitary or your stormwater sewer system, that could get quite expensive. So to quantify that, I mean, we are taking a look at all of the infrastructure that is you know, under the ground, being able to assess that. So to answer your question, it'd be tough to quantify, but... Uh, um, so it would be more of a prudent um, tool to prevent these catastrophes or these expensive um, resulting damage? Well, we, we not only can go out and assess our infrastructure with this piece of equipment, we, we receive several calls throughout the year from homeowners who say, hey, we've got a sinkhole in our backyard. So we can put this camera in there, basically tunnel it down the pipe and take a look at their sewer lead as well and take a look up there. Sometimes we've often found a bad connection or something in their pipe where we're able to assess that or, and, and find that out and help them in the process as well. So this is a very key troubleshooting piece of equipment for us. We do get all sorts of calls throughout the year in terms of the integrity of the pipe and issues out there. We're able to go down and take a look at that and it's very important for us in assessing that. So in, in short, it's gonna pay for itself over and over and over again. Certainly. I know, uh, Mr. Corbett, you brought this up years ago. It, it's so important that the city's proactive on taking a look at what's under our ground because we'd rather spend the money now than spend the money in lawsuit settlements um, and so, you know, I, I, you can never estimate how many lawsuits the city will face, but wasn't it something around 50000 a year maybe that we were paying in sewer? I, I, you can't really put your thumb on that, but I mean, um, I, I, it, it could pay for itself, you know, if the city is so proactive and, and like Mr. Meyer said, it, it, this will be connected to our GIS system. Yeah, I mean, we, we are able to look into the future and see problems developing bef before they damage property or uh, injure people. Your Honor, I'd also like to make one other point, too, is uh, when our contractor that's actually working on the uh, uh, cameraing and cleaning of our existing sanitary sewer network now, after they get through the entire city and they hand over the records and we start building our asset management plan, the maintenance of our sewer system just doesn't go away that's when we take over at that point. So we're gonna need the tools to be successful to do that once the contractor does get through the city on a moving forward basis as well. So. Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. Um, could I ask a question, technical question um, for Mr. Vitale? Um, I have a couple rental uh, and I know, familiar with what the sewer inspector can do. Um, can you tell me just a technical question, how far can you go like from a property onto down the pipe? How long will the camera go in terms of feet? Your Honor, uh, our camera won't be used in a private setting. Okay. But to answer your question, I think you're asking about maybe the homeowner's lead. Right. Uh, most plumbers will either use a Gen I, which is a smaller camera that you can feed through the clean out in the basement. They can usually make the entire run with that to get it out to where it actually would drop into our main. So, and those runs can be anywhere from 50 to 150 feet, depending on when the, where the homeowner is tapped onto our main. Sometimes it's under the road on the other side of the street. But uh, our camera, we can run this thing out three, four, 500 feet, no problem. We typically would 
inspect the sewer from manhole to manhole, basically then move down. This thing's got some uh, distance on it, though. It, it, it can travel quite some footage. And will there be a digital file created from each viewing so that you can go back and see and review that at any point? That is correct. That is one of the benefits or the, the pros of this new technology is when my guys are out in the field and they drop this camera in, they start recording it, it will basically be sent wirelessly to our uh, software platform. That same day I can click right on that piece of pipe on the GIS and it'll pull up the video and I can watch it from there. Okay. It's actually pretty neat. Right. Thank you very much. I'd like to follow. Mr. Vitale Jr., would you please stay in the hot seat? <laughs> Councilwoman Scott did bring up a question. Um, you know, although we're not televising pipes that are under people's houses, this could be helpful if a homeowner suspects root damage or maybe some blockage, and the city could come and, and take a look at the city pipes to at least say, well, no, it's not a city pipe, it's somewhere from somewhere under your house. I mean, we, we're not gonna go under their house, but we can at least create some clarity. Is that true? That's correct. I mean, we can only look so far up the homeowner's lead where the, the connection is to our main. For example, our uh, contractor that's working out there right now, as they go down a sewer main, a city-owned and maintained sewer main, it will travel along, and when they see a homeowner's tap, they'll basically pan the camera and take a look at it, and sometimes you'll see root intrusion in there. So we may get a call from X homeowner that says, you know, I'm not flowing or I'm backing up in my basement, can you take a look? Historically, what DPS would do at that point is, we'll usually go look between two manholes. If the home is here, we'll go look between two manholes and see if there's flow in our main. At that point, we'll tell the homeowner, we're flowing, we're down and flowing, it's probably an internal issue, but this piece of equipment will allow us to get more in depth and do some, do some analyzing for the homeowner, potentially. Thank you. Well done, Mr. Vitale. Are there any other uh, questions from City Council or comments? All right, let's vote on this item. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, say no. If the motion carries. We'll continue on to item G, which is ordinances. And we have one up for discussion tonight. It's ordinance number 2119, amending the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board ordinance. Uh, Mr. Myers, can we have a report? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Several months ago, um, I asked staff to discuss with the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board the concept of adding an ex officio, meaning non-voting board position, which would allow for a regular dialogue between Oakland County Parks and Recreation and the city. Uh, this idea was welcomed by the Oakland County Parks and Recreation Executive Officer and Parks and Recreation Manager. Uh, at the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board meeting of July 20th, the board unanimously approved the motion recommending an ordinance amendment to create uh, one additional ex officio member position on the board to be filled by one Oakland County Parks and Recreation staff member. Provided for council's consideration as a proposed ordinance amendment that adds one ex officio member to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board to be filled by one Oakland County Parks and Rec staff member. In addition, the proposed amendment clarifies that the DPS director is one of the ex officio members from the city as there is no longer an assistant city manager in this uh, position in the city. Staff, the city attorney's office and I recommend that council approve ordinance 2119 on the first reading. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, please. Mr. Corbett. Yeah, um, I would uh, move that the uh, council approve on first reading ordinance 2119, a modification to the Parks and Recreation Board. Uh, Great, thank you. Is there support? Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Uh, thank you. A, a motion was made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilwoman Scott, to approve on first reading ordinance number 2119, which is a modification to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board ordinance. Uh, is there any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Just uh, on behalf of the Parks and Recreation uh, Committee, just uh, it seemed like a no-brainer for communication purposes to, uh, to establish and have on-site for our meetings a member from uh, Parks, uh, the Oakland County Parks and Recreation Group. Uh, we have an awful lot of overlap, plus, as you saw a little bit earlier this evening, uh, some uh, intermingled uh, assets and uh, priorities here in the city. So it's a communication device. Uh, it does not 
uh, dilute in any manner the local uh, control or influence. It's an ex officio position, but it, it just seemed like a, just seemed like a great idea. So, uh, on behalf of the uh, Parks and Recreation, I would uh, recommend it to the council for favorable uh, consideration. Mr. Mayor. Please, Mr. Gunnings. Question. Um, when we need one over half in order to conduct a meeting, correct? For the Parks and Rec Advisory Board? Oh, to conduct business, you would need a quorum. Um, so how, how would, this, would this affect? This This is a non-voting position, Your Honor. So, so they're not, not included. Not that was my question. Quorum, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Myers. Mr. Mayor. Yes, please. Um, looking at this again, I'm not sure how, what happened there, whether I missed it or it was missed in the, the transmission, but I know the intent was if we read the actual uh, black line copy, it says 13 members to be appointed by the mayor with the approval of city council and three ex officio members. It's the intent is 13 members total, 12 to be appointed by the mayor with approval of city council and the 13 comes from the added uh, ex officio member. So I would suggest maybe the motion uh, be amended to uh, show a change in the proposed ordinance that uh, it read the board shall be composed of 13 members comma 12 to be appointed by the mayor with approval of the city council and three ex officio members. I think that uh, is more clear than how it reads now. I think one could read that uh, obviously contrary to the intent of, of what the intent of everybody was in this regard. So I just ask that the motion include uh, the addition of a comma and the number 12 in the second sentence of section 19-28, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, please, Mr. Corbett. Just an observation, I'd be more than happy to accommodate the changes. I would just observe, there is a second reading on this ordinance upcoming. That's correct. And we could amend on second. Uh, we could go ahead and approve it tonight and then make the adjustment on the second reading, which I don't have a preference, Your Honor, whatever you would prefer. That's fine, just if I may. Um, I think it's six and one half dozen of the other. That's correct, Mr. Corbett. I just want to make, I think it makes it more clear. That's fine. Will I, you please, let's, I, I can you would I will accept the amendment now, amend the motion, please. I, and I, I will incorporate by reference the comments of the attorney so that it clearly expresses a 13 member total. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Scott, who supported the motion, would you agree to the yes. amendment? Support agrees. Okay, I'll, I'll just repeat it. Uh, there was a motion made by Councilman Corbett, seconded by Councilwoman Scott, and the motion was amended to approve on first reading ordinance number 2119, which is an amendment to uh, the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, and also to incorporate the Assistant City Attorney's comments regarding a comma after 13 members uh, and 12 members appointed by the mayor with the approval of city council and the 13th member to be ex officio members. Mr. Mayor. And if there's any mistake in that language, language can be tightened up by the second and final reading. As Mr. Corbett pointed out, this is just a first reading. Mr. Mayor. Discussion, yes. We have three ex officio or four. We have Kirby, Jerry Zarugian, Joe no. Vitale. No, 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 Your Honor, Jerry Zarugian is, a, is an appointed the you're chairperson. Right, it would right. be, yes, it would be so the would, DPS director, the recreation coordinator, and the Oakland County Parks and Rec. So we're going member. from two to three on ex officios. Yes. Okay, thank and just, you. Just to clarify, Your Honor, procedurally how we handle this is similar to the, to the representatives from the school districts in that all we ask of the appointing authority Authority, be it a school district or in this case, Oakland County Parks and Rec, is, if, is that they send us something official, an email, a report that says so and so is uh, this person is, is authorized to be our representative on the Parks and Recreation Board, and we would follow the same process with uh, Oakland County Parks. Do they also um, submit to the criminal background check that regular members of the public? That's a good question. Right. It's my understanding that everybody goes through that. Yes, they, that's, that's correct, they do. All right, it's the same process, okay. 
Any further discussion on the amended motion? Uh, Your Honor? Yes, please. Uh, this, uh, this is the second time in the last couple of years, or last few years, that we're reviewing uh, and amending this ordinance. Uh, the last time we did it was to add the alternates. Um, one thing that you know I'll, I'll bring up now and might be worth discussing on second reading, typically our boards have an odd number of uh, members and if we're already amending this you know we do have alternates on that board it's not like we'd be leaving a seat vacant it's a pretty popular board so you know maybe it would make sense to add the one officio while also making it an uneven number of 13 you know total members um, you know again maybe something that we discuss on second reading but I just want to float that out there because this is now the second time in the last few years and if we want to get to an odd number it probably best to just do it now it's an advisory board so I mean if they deadlock we just take action anyway um, I mean they don't have final authority so I mean in theory you're saying there's 12 voting members so it could, a vote could split six to six and it fails yeah. I mean I if, th it, I I don't know if it was planning or ZBA or well, just ZBA I mean we would want an imbalanced number but I get what you're saying. I I, I I don't know. Is it necessary? I, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but Your Honor, I, I think this might be the only board with an even number of uh, people serving. So, it, it, and it's not like we have a hard time filling this board. So, adding one more person to make it uneven, you know, it's probably. I mean, it's doable. It's not going to sit empty. It might help them a little bit more with a quorum because you have to have even plus one, so, yeah, that no, it gives hurt. It hurt. I'm just, plus one. Pardon me, Your Honor. Uh, one I just was going to say you just increased the number by one required to, right? If you're going to go to one. It would be 13, so it would be the same. Well, if you add one, then the same. 14 it minus still be, the three. It would still be seven, right? So it's, it's one over half, right? Yeah, it's one over half, so it would be seven, right? Yeah. One over half of attendant in yeah. attendance. So they need something to conduct I, a meeting. I don't think it's that yeah. important of a change that we should uh, put staff through <laughs> reports and vetting the language. I, I, Your Honor, yeah, I can't I, answer the question off offhand about how many other boards have odd or even number, but I can tell you, in the in the six years that I was uh, liaison to to Parks and Rec, and even thinking back before that, I cannot remember a, a time where there was a vote that was was deadlocked or. Well, or uh, would have been benefited by an, by an odd number. But. I get your point, Mr. Bliss. I mean, <laughs> you're trying to avoid a deadlock, and you also are, um, I'll put words in your mouth, but you know, you're encouraging more public involvement and decision making. I, I get it, but. Your, your Honor, I, I just, you know, we're, we're going through another round of cleanup on this ordinance, and so I, I think it's worth just throwing out to the table, because if that becomes necessary down the road, you know, we, we could solve it today as opposed to revisiting this same ordinance in another three years is just all that I'm suggesting. As a part of the dialogue, it might be nice to include in the report. I'm not suggesting we amend the first reading for that, but it might be nice to just have a little bit of analysis before we go back for second reading, just to see if it would merit discussion. Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. Um, if it's council's desire, um, I have no problem presenting a, I guess an alternate uh, version for second reading uh, for council's consideration, incorporating Councilman's Bliss's um, request if, if that's what council wants to do I'm happy to do it the, the language change would be really simple I would only be changing the let the, the word six to seven <laughs> members and then changing again what we just talked about of my amendment to leave it at 13 at that point in time we wouldn't have to change what I suggested if if that's council's desire we're we're happy to do that because it would be a very easy change Mr. Mayor? Yes, please, Mr. Corbett. I'm not aware, and this goes to the mayor's point a minute ago, I'm not aware of any official, for example, planning commission has to make a recommendation on certain items coming before the council. Um, so you've got to have, well, you don't have to have, but it'd be nice if you had a yes or no vote. Um, of course, well, zoning board, as the mayor points out, is an entirely different breed. Its decisions are not appealed locally. 
Um, is there anything, and I can't remember in the years I've been around, I don't remember anything. What about the adoption of the uh, master plan for the parks and rec for the city? Does that require a vote of the board? Your Honor, yeah, yes it does. Well, Public, then I guess Mr. Hearing, Bliss's yes. point is made. I, I'll, I'll, then yes, I'd like to see that variation. O only for that reason. I grant you it's a skinny logic, but but I know that the kind of, the kind of thing that bo bothers the parliamentary mind like Mr. Bliss, and I share that uh, affliction, so thank you. Okay, so we're gonna stand with the amended ordinance, or the oh, amended tonight, motion yeah, tonight, as, yes. um, staff can publish whatever report they want, but we're not gonna amend the uh, motion again. Uh, okay, any further discussion? Your, Your Honor, just, just so staff and I are clear, count, council is looking for a report for second reading on well, the second concept brought up of an odd number board. Mr. Mayor, I, when I just said that, I didn't mean you guys to, you know, Stay up all weekend no. on this, but you can just you can just change a couple on the change and the provide the all, yeah. What do you say? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we get a second bite at the apple anyway. So yeah. whatever is on the paper for the next meeting, we, we can talk about it if we're not happy. Till we're blue in the face. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Option A and option B. Yeah, the assistant okay. city attorney mentioned you know presenting alter, alternate alternate language. That's worked in the past, and option A, option B. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. any other discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes, please. I too had some concern because of, um, it could be logically an even vote, but, because um, that bothers me whenever you're voting on something, that it could possibly tie. Um, but because of it being an advisory board, I'm comfortable with the way it stands. And that's only the only reason, because ordinarily I would feel more comfortable if you had an uneven vote or uneven elector. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Mr. Bliss, I appreciate you bringing this up. It's very important that we talk about it. I mean, are there any unintended consequences? Now there's, there, I mean, it, is there a slightly greater burden on the clerk <laughs> or a slightly greater burden on the staff? now has to present one extra agenda package. I mean, it, it's so slight. I don't know, I'm just spitballing like Your Honor, we're, we're emailing no agenda packets now anyway. So. Wow. Yeah, you, Your Honor, I, I, I just wanted to have the discussion now instead of revisiting. And as Councilman Corbett said, I mean, if there had been a split in the master plan, uh, if you know some of the recommendations that they make to council, if there's a 50-50 split, if we see that, you know, two three years from now, we're going to want to revisit this ordinance then and have the conversation. So I just think it merits the discussion. Yeah. Uh, is the only reason that I brought it up. Oh, and you know, um, another great thing about our boards and commissions is yes, they are public meetings, but they tend to be held in boardrooms, which loosen up discussion where they are able to work by consensus. So if they do have disagreements, they work them out at the, at the boardroom table. Um, I haven't seen political stands or uh, you know, the city torn in two over an advisory board's decision. Any other discussion? Okay, we'll vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, say no. The motion carries. All right, we don't, we do not have unfinished business, which brings us to the minutes. Can I have a motion regarding the minutes of August 14th? Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. I move that we approve the minutes of the regular council meeting of August 14th, 2017 as printed. Thank you, sir. Is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corbett. Support. Thank you. Motion was made by Mayor Pro Tem Bliss, seconded by Councilman Corbett to adopt as printed the minutes from the regular meeting of 8-14-17. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed say no. The motion carries. Which brings us to appointments to the city boards and commissions. I see there's um, a mayor's appointment to the crime commission. It's a current member named Marilyn Maley, and she's willing to serve another three-year term. Um, her new term would expire September 12, 2020. 
Would someone on city council please approve that mayor's appointment? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Clark. I'd make a motion to reappoint Marilyn Maley to the term of crime commission to end, it's a three year term, to end on 09-12-2020. Great, is there support? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second it. Thank you. Any discussion to reappoint Marilyn Maley to the Crime Commission for a new three-year term to expire September 12, 2020? Discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. She's reappointed. Are there any other nominations tonight? I understand there was an application to the Planning Commission, but I haven't seen the application, so if Council wouldn't mind, I'm not gonna make an appointment yet. Uh, sorry to the applicant, but I wanna, I just want, I wanna review the application before I make an appointment. Any other uh, nominations tonight? Okay, uh, before we adjourn, there's no executive session, but before we adjourn, I'd invite any closing comments from members of City Council and staff. Uh, we'll begin with Mr. Corbett. Just a couple of quick items this evening. I wanted to take note of the passing of uh, Tally Madoski. We got an email on that earlier today. Um, I, um, I knew her when I started my tenure on council. We did a lot of different things, uh, a lot more things over at the Nature Center. And I think right about then was when she was kind of like at her maximum volunteering. Because I remember she was just uh, the, the sweetest thing, especially we'd bring over the uh, grandkids. And uh, she was always very kind. And uh, I remember kidding her that for a while there, it seemed like she must sleep there because she was there all the time. But um, nice lady and um, I'll uh, support a uh, resolution I think Mr. Gettings wants to introduce in a minute. Um, just wanted to wish everybody a safe um, and careful Labor Day weekend. Uh, a lot of uh, crazy people on the roads this weekend, but uh, trying to get their last, last vacation in. And last but not least, echo from uh, Mrs. Scott's uh, prayer earlier, I would agree we need to pray for Houston. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that in my life, and I've seen a lot of uh, different things there. So anyway, that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Bliss? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, first, I wanted to, to thank Mr. Vitale for getting us all nerding out on sewer cameras. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate uh, the amount of time that he's been up here answering all of our questions. Uh, also wanted to thank Councilwoman Scott for uh, that invocation today. It was, it was timely. It was very well written. Uh, and, you know, my prayers go out to those in Texas. I know there's some, you know, former Lanfair and Madison grads that are down there. I've been seeing some firsthand accounts on uh, Facebook. Book and you know, it's kind of scary. So my, you know, my 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 thoughts and prayers go out to everybody that's experiencing that. And you know, I know there's a lot of local charities as well as the Red Cross that are accepting donations for the relief effort. Um, so I, I'd encourage uh, people to to go out and you know help how they can, uh, even at minimum, uh, you know, sending your thoughts and prayers. Uh, and some happy news: uh, there were four excellent community events in the last ten days. Uh, really exciting. Uh, the the Solberg Mission Day Carnival was a whole lot of fun. Uh, the seniors there were raising money for a new computer lab. Uh, and it was just really exciting to, to see the community come out. Uh, even even the football players from Madison High were, were there. And it was just a really cool and, and fun time. Uh, also fun was the uh, Friends of the Madison Heights Area Seniors Picnic. Uh, great community event. Uh, nice draw to, you know, one of my favorite underappreciated Appreciated parks in our system, uh, Huffman Park. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Central Church had their movie night. My kids had a fun time uh, bouncing on their bounce houses and meeting uh, uh, Woody and, and Buzz uh, as, you know, with the, the Toy Story characters. So that was a lot of fun. And then the trucks event trucks event this weekend was so much fun. Uh, the Community Coalition, DDA, Chamber of Commerce, Madison School, 
schools and the city, everybody banded together. We had trucks from uh, Navistar, uh, had, had a, uh, a, a, I think a military vehicle there. I mean, it was really cool. Uh, my son's three years old and I took him to a, uh, an event with a bunch of trucks. I was a hero. <laughs> it was an excellent time and, and you know, the, you know, the, the, the officers that were there, uh, you know, our, our, our firemen that were there, everybody that had participated. It was just a really cool thing, and uh, I look forward to more events like, like these. I mean, here's four events all put on by, by different groups, different organizations, uh, bringing the community together. It was, it was just really cool to see, uh, really cool to be a part of, and, you know, I look forward to, to doing more events. Uh, and one of those uh, is similar to, to what happened in Hazel Park over the weekend. They had their sixth annual art fair, um, and that's something that we could do here. You know, I'm, I'm excited because I've been, uh, you know, brainstorming and, and vetting the Arts Council with staff. Uh, we have a, uh, a proposal that we're, we'll be voting on uh, next month. Uh, we'll you know, have some great uh, great discussion on that. I'm, I'm really excited because of the, the potential of getting a bunch of artists in the room and starting to brainstorm how do we make this, you know, community, uh, you know, more beautiful. How do we how do we have programming uh, like like an art fair, uh, I, I just think it's going to be a really fun discussion and something that's both timely and necessary for our city to move forward. It ties into a lot of things that we're doing with our 20-year DDA plan, uh, and that, that group could be very influential in our city, and I'm, I'm excited to see that uh, come to a vote next month. I don't know if it'll be the first meeting or the second meeting, but uh, really excited to talk about that with the, uh, the, the rest of my peers on council, and then in the meantime, if any uh, residents would like to hear more about the proposal or they want to be notified to come and speak on it when uh, when we're voting. Uh, just just let me know. Uh, that's it, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Gettings. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was hoping that the council would uh, entertain a certificate for Mrs. Madowski. Uh, in 2001, she volunteered over 2,500 hours at the Nature Center and was uh, the volunteer of the year. She's a good lady, or was a good lady, I should say. Both her kids worked for the rec department uh, over at Woodland School, Martha and Bill. And I know she'll be missed a lot at the Senior Center. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Your Honor, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a, a service at St. Vincent's on August 10th, and uh, we'll certainly put the certificate together, but we'll also try to contact the family to see if they can attend the council meeting the next night uh, on the 11th. Uh, I do understand that if the family's in Colorado or from Colorado, so maybe they'll be in town, but we'll certainly make the, make the effort to, to try to do it at the council meeting. So thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Thank you. Uh, Mr. City Attorney? Nothing, thank you. Mr. City Manager. I just want to echo the council's sentiments about the Houston disaster and my thoughts and prayers are going out to them as well. And regarding the truck event, I have a note here from the uh, chamber director that she and the chief estimate uh, that there were 400 people coming and going to the event. So congratulations to the chamber. That's all your honor. Mr. City Clerk. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to add that um, the clerk's office does not have the ballots yet for the upcoming election, but we always put a ballot for each precinct style on the website. So as that date gets near, you can keep checking back the, elec the election website for a sample ballot for your precinct. Um, there are three school districts in the city of Madison Heights, and all three do have a ballot proposal. So if you um, want to check that out, with the wording will also be available for that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Uh, one thing, Mr. Mayor. You know, a lot of people are campaigning on the blight of the city. A lot of people are interested in it. I would like to see, look into it, of enlisting senior citizens that would drive around and if they see a blight situation, say somebody left their garbage cans out three days after they were supposed to be taken and put in the back, or high grass, or cars parked with no plates on it, 
not have any authority, but just to jot this down, what the blight is, the date, the address, and have a senior to compile all of this information instead of having anybody in the city. I don't want to see any of the city workers getting stuck with something else. They, they've got enough to do. But maybe once a month, turn this list in to whoever, maybe it's ordinance officer, maybe the police station, and they could check themselves and follow up on it if, say, four or five months, the same thing is going on all the time. That would save the ordinance officer the footwork and let the seniors do it. Not to get out of their car or anything, like I say, or have any authority at all, but just jot this down. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Mr. Clark, that's interesting. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, would you ask for uh, staff to do a report on this issue? Because I think you hit a great idea here. Well, if it, if it don't cost too much money. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> um, it's kind of saying, you know, our code, you know, our code officer has, what, 75 cases a day, it's right. some crazy number like that. Right. But if you put, um, yeah, you said not the power, but if, you know, if you tell the residents to start to prioritize, you know, some issues that they're seeing in their neighborhoods, um, you know, you're almost asking the public just to step up to say, be a good concerned neighbor. <laughs> You know, instead of calling the cops or calling the code department, just be a good neighbor and say, "Hey, buddy, do you want to do you want to fix that gutter that's been hanging for two months? Maybe maybe someone just needs a hand or something." You know, not to make a big Supreme Court case over it, like you just said. Don't bother the city worker, right? But just kind of uh, remind each other that we we can get a lot done by just paying attention and talking to people. Right, maybe. and also put on add to that is drive around behind. All, all the restaurants, all the restaurants we have now, is if the garbage is overflowing, that's what brings the rats in. Garbage is overflowing or it stinks in the neighborhood, you can smell it, to write it down. Maybe once a month or something, give it to the ordinance officer or have the ordinance officer get it. You know, it'll all be compiled, dates, times, I yeah. think that eliminate a little rodent problem too. Yeah, you're not saying we need to deputize a, a, a band no, of vigilante no. seniors, but I mean, <laughs> even, even a, you know, before you file a, a code complaint, you know, our, our process is, hey, have you talked to the person first? You know, that's that's a very important first step to our system. But that's to be the ordinance officer's job. Not or us. Well, not the senior. No, it is our job. It, it, it's our job as a public. You know, if we got a pesky neighbor, right. we should go knock on the door. Hey, neighbor, I, I see you got some uh, pallets stacked up behind your garage. Can I help you move them out? That's an important step to help alleviate the uh, uh, backlog of cases. Yeah, don't pick fights. Don't don't be hostile. But it's important that we speak up and approach our neighbors. So I like what you're saying. Who knows, there may be issues, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, yeah, like I say, I don't want, it's staff a, has enough to do. A lot of seniors want something to do during the day, <laughs> except sit around the house. Let them go out and drive around. They see something, write it down. Then, have, like I say, have one of them compile all this on a computer. It might help, I don't know. There's something there, you got something there. Um, anything else, Mr. Clark, tonight? I know this is a closing oh, comment. Your, your Honor, we'll be happy to, to take that issue back and give council a full, full report on it. All right. Mrs. Scott, would you like to add anything tonight? Uh, yes. And um, I'm one of those seniors that never sit around wondering what to do, but I think this is a good idea. And I think you're referring to a visual thing only. Right, that's all. Not get involved with the neighbor or, mm -hmm. but there could be a reason and that person could just need a little help. Um, I know from experience, sometimes you can't lift things and you need to take them out to the garbage and um, that might be the problem. So I think that's a good idea. Uh, 
especially for seniors, that would be make them even more important to us in the city. So I think that deserves exploring. Um, and speaking of seniors, I would like to also acknowledge the passing of Antoinette Madowski. Actually, we called her Tally. And I had the pleasure of working with Tally at the Nature Center for probably 10, 15 years. And um, she just brought a ray of sunshine to the Nature Center because she was always willing to volunteer to do anything that anybody asked her. Um, she was very active and she really gave uh, a promotion to our Nature Center and really spoke on good behalf of it. Um, it was nice to work alongside of her, but I do think that all the hours that she put in, I know it says here 2,500 hours, um, that's probably all way underestimating what, how long she was there. Um, she passed away on our August 19th, and she's living in Brighton, um, in Brighton, Colorado. So um, I know she had gone there because her family needed to take care of her a little closer. But she was 93, as they say, 93 years young, and um, I would greatly entertain the fact that you will be doing a resolution for her. She was also very active at the Senior Center, too. I know I saw her line dancing and participating in a lot of activities, so we'll really miss her, and she was such an addition to our Nature Center and our city. So I think we deserve to remember her with kindness and with a lot of sweet thoughts. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Mr. Soltis? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I was going to write a letter to the editor for Detroit News, uh, so I'm just going to read part of what I would write, uh, wrote. So in reference to the Detroit News August 23rd article, quote, um, the title, Detroiter says suburban cops terrorized her during raid. Uh, I'm speaking out in defense of our Southeast Oakland County SWAT team, and specifically our own Madison ICE officers that, that were there participated in the arrest uh, from the grossly inaccurate and all too, all too familiar inflammatory remarks by this mayoral wannabe and his opportunist staff member, as well as the so-called terrorized victim who was the one harboring the fugitive in her house. Uh, all that was said by the aforementioned individuals, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, I cannot em emphasize enough that I believe in these officers. I trust in them. I, take, um, I trust in them to take dangerous criminals off the street in the right way and know how to, it was depicted from those benefiting from misinformation. I think lying about the, our officers is reprehensible, is only self-serving. Uh, what a desperate attempt at race baiting to spew idiotic statements like suburban cops think they can do anything to black folks, or, he said, invading armies use of Gestapo-like tactics. The bottom line is that it's an attempted murder suspect who was apprehended and communities are safer for it. Uh, again, this is another my opinion, and I just want to say it. I took my sons to the Selfridge Air Force, or excuse me, Air Base, the show. Uh, it's awesome as always, and it's every four years. Um, and then at this one moment, they had the national anthem playing uh, with the military heroes present, and a skydiver was parachuting with this gigantic American flag. And they were playing, like I said, the national anthem. And I thought to myself, what if somebody had the nerve to sit down during that moment. Um, I think it's a disgrace that the football players are disrespecting our flag and our current past veterans. So, thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, yeah, I want to thank Mayor Pro Tem Bliss for chairing the meeting um, last time. Thank you, sir. Um, and Councilwoman Scott's invocation tonight was very inspiring. You know, there are many charities that support the victims of her, uh, the hurricane in Texas. However, the American Red Cross is one of the most reputable, and their uh, website is uh, redcross.org. And I know the Michigan region of the American Red Cross is, uh, was sending their contingent today. Um, and so you can donate to the American Red Cross, specifically the Michigan region, if you'd like, and that helps them prepare and respond to uh, catastrophes like this. Um, over the weekend, I attended an event at the Chinese Cultural Center, where I'm a member of, and the, they hosted a healthy gardening fair, 
and they purchased all the equipment for running a nice little festival. They have the pop-up tents. They figured out how to do the county food license. Um, and they have a, a beautiful facility with restrooms and a kitchen and, and a place for cool shelter. And they offered, the leaders of the Association of Chinese Americans offered to host a fall festival for us or a farmer's market for us. Uh, they just, they would have the space, the insurance, all the equipment. They would just need the city or maybe a charity to, to do the promotion and to help them uh, get farmers or whoever would be interested in this. So I'm just floating it out there. If anyone feels strongly <laughs> to take this football and run with it, there could be something interesting to do. Um, okay, another thing, I ran into the mayor of Royal Oak today who is my chief rival and I think he's a distant cousin. He's the same last name as my grandma, uh, grandma's maiden name. But he challenged the city of Madison Heights to a recycling, recycle off, <laughs> that we, our two cities would establish some baseline of tonnage of recycling. And after a period of time, I don't know, six months, eight months, a year, see which city recycled more per capita. And I know this council passed a goal to offer its residents um, use of the special kind of garbage can, you know, the lifting arm. Maybe we could also offer our residents the opportunity to use the lifting arm type recycling bin. I don't know who would pay for this. Um, but I think we did the, a fun type of recycling challenge with Hazel Park maybe 10, 15 years ago. But Royal Oak has put us on notice that we need to recycle more. And I thought, I don't know, maybe there could be some playful thing with them just to encourage recycling if staff could look into that. Uh, and I want to bring up another issue. About, a, I don't know, a, a year or two ago, we had a fire at an industrial building on 14 Mile. I'm not going to name the business, but it's a very important business that produces food, um, interna in, an internationally beloved company. And the fire was not necessarily contained to one spot of the building. Smoke spread throughout the building. and and smoke and fire can be contained if, you, if a building has a properly working HVAC system that has a fire and smoke damper system. So, you know, like a fire alarm, the HVAC system is supposed to shut down and seal off certain corners of a building. So if you have smoke and fire in one corner, you can still operate the other, you know, the rest of the building is not damaged. Well, there is an organization in Michigan that's promoting inspections of HVAC systems, specifically in industrial buildings. It's already part of the building code. You're supposed to have properly working fire dampers. And I'm not sure what we can do. They, this organization wants us to pass an ordinance or some sort of resolution just reminding our industrial businesses to just take a look at their HVAC system. So if, if council would consider, you know, maybe just a, a resolution at least just reminding the industrial, our industrial business partners to, to re-inspect their property. And maybe as a sign that, you know, we understand the issue, maybe we should inspect our own city buildings just to be sure our HVAC systems have proper fire damper systems um, so damage can be contained if, if a tragedy ever does happen. Um, so the resolution, please, um, encouraging our industrial partners and then we could lead by example to inspect our own municipal buildings first. Um, with that, I want to thank City Council. This was a it, this was the ugly side of government tonight. We're talking about sewers and roofs and streetlights. Um, very technical stuff. It's not it's not the front the fun front page type of work, but it's so important to good governance that the City Council came prepared. So thank you for your detailed questions. Thank you for staff for supplying us with the reports and the follow-up tonight. Before we close, any other comments from council? Is there any other business before city council tonight? All right, uh, well, thank you. Uh, with that, the meeting is adjourned. Good evening.